<coughs> okay, so in this case, what we're going to work through is um, seeing all the possible s solutions. So we have angle A equals 12, B equals 31, and A equals 20.5 degrees. So I'm going to draw a triangle. And like I said, when dealing with angle, angle, side, you don't really know exactly how your Side, side, angle? No, these are, ang I'm sorry, side, side, angle, yes, thank you. So you don't really always know what exactly your triangle could look like. So it could be one with an obtuse angle, or it could be one with, uh, <clears throat> with an acute. So we're going to have A equals 20 degrees, 0.5, and A equals 12 over there. And then we know B equals 31. <clears throat> Actually, let's write this here. And here's our angle B. So therefore, we'll call this C and this little c. All right? So now, again, since we have side-side angle, we know we have an ambiguous case. We can have one solution, no solution, or two solutions. So first of all, let's just go through and see what we have <clears throat> for at least our first angle B. So we have 12 over the sine of 20.5 degrees is going to equal <clears throat> 31 over the sine of B. So now, go and solve. Sine of B is equal to 31 times sine of 20.5 divided by 12. So let's go and plug, check all this stuff in. So you have the uh, 20.5 times sine times 31 divided by 12. And you get sine of B equals 0.9047. Take the inverse sine of that, and you get B is equal to 64.78 degrees. All right? So now it could be 64.78 degrees, but remember what I said when I was talking about this, when dealing with your domain of sine, as long as, it's, as, long as <clears throat> you're taking the inverse, there's a couple angles. You have 64 degrees. But you could also use the reference angle of 64 degrees in your second quadrant. The heck? Oh, it's embarrassing. It's embarrassing. So what I could do is take 180 minus 64.78. And that's going to give me another angle of 115.22. Do you guys notice, see how these are both 64.78? As far as reference angles, those two are exactly the same. You guys see how those 64 and 64 off of the x-axis, I have two angles that are 64.78 degrees. Does everybody see that? OK? We know that these two angles have the exact same y-coordinate, right? So their signs are equal. So it could be this angle, or it could be this angle. But we don't use this angle, because we, we always have to go, when we're writing an angle in standard form, we write it from the starting point. So we have 64.78. And then 180 minus 64.78 gives us an angle of 115.22. So now let's go and double check to make sure both of these could work. Well, if I say one angle is 64.78, our other angle is 20.5. Well, obviously, this put 20.5 is still going to give us another angle, right? Which, which would be our last. Um, so if we're going to say B equals 64.78, then we can easily figure out what our other angle is. So 180 minus 64.78 minus 20.5. And we could say C equals that. So you could do 180 minus 64.78 minus, minus 20.5. That's not right. 180 minus 64.78 minus 20.5. So I could say, in this example, I have 94.72 degrees. That's for that triangle. But I also said, why don't you take a look at, we also said it could be, B could also be 115.22. Well, let's, let's see that. Because what if I did C equals 180 minus 115.22 minus 20.5? Would that still provide us with an angle C? Right? Because what if this was an obtuse angle now? Rather than being acute, let's say it's obtuse. So let's take a look at it. So we could say C equals 
or C could equal 115 degrees. So what I'll do is 180 minus 115.22 minus 20.5. So I'm also saying that B could also be, or C could also equal 44.28. All right, so what we're doing is we're actually providing it with two different solutions. So now what we're going to have is case one and case two. We could say C equals 94.72, or we could say C equals 44.28. You're going to use both. You have to prove both of them. So now that we've determined that both of these could possibly work, what we're going to do is we're going to set up our problem and say case one and case two. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Good question. Because both of them are possible, you don't know. So we could say B equals 64. So if B equals 64, that means C equaled 94.72. Or you could say if C equaled 115, then C equaled 44.28. So now what we'll do is we're just going to set up two cases. So what we have here is we have 20.25. So there's your A. And we said that um, your C here could be, so if this is 20.48, your C could be 90 degrees or 94.72, and that would leave your B to be 64.78, right? That's case one. And we already know A equals 12 and B equals 31. But then we could also do, what if we had A was still 20.25, but then our uh, C so let's say A is going to be 20.25 B right there is going to equal 115.22 and then C is going to equal 44.28. So do you guys see how we could still create two different triangles? All these angles add up to 180. All these angles add up to 180. So there's two different cases we need to work on. So the reason why, Taylor, you can't just say, oh, one's right and one's wrong, is because both of these are possible. All right. So we need to make sure we evaluate for both cases. So let's do case one. So in case one, we know all the angles. The only thing we don't know is what C is. So we just need to pick a ratio. A's, A's with C's or B's with C's. Doesn't really matter. Let's just do this one. Let's do B. So I say 31 over the sine of 64.78 is equal to C over 94.72. And then for case two, again, we don't know what the C value is, as this is 31 and this is 12. We don't know what C is. So again, we're going to use another ratio. Again, you can still use the ratio of, this, um, of A. In this case, let's do B. So I'll do, oh, actually, I did B. I did B. So this one, let's do A. So I'll do uh, 12 over 20 point, the sine of 20.25 equals C over the sine of 44.28. I don't know why I didn't write that in there. OK? Does anybody have any questions so far of what I've gone through? Can you use Yep. Anybody have any issues with how I created those two cases or why I created the two cases? Yes? It's 20.5, not 20.25. 20 point what? 
Oh, thank you. I don't know where that came from. All right, so now I can just say C is going to equal 31 times the sine of 94.72 divided by the sine of 64.78. So we could say C could equal this, or we could say C is going to equal 12 times sine of 44.28 divided by the sine of 20.5. So now we just go and evaluate for each one of these values. And so you could do 94.72 sine times 31 divided by 64.78 sine. And I get 34.15 for that angle. Or you could do this one, which you'd have sine of 44.28 sine times 12 divided by 20.5 sine. And here I get C could equal 23.922. So we have two different possibilities for our angles of sine. It could either be 34.15, which you guys notice, that's going to create a, you can even see just in my sketches of my triangles, this, this C, right, the length of this C is larger than the length of this C. And I just roughly sketched it. Um, but you guys can see also by plugging in the lows. Okay? So again, going back to when you have side side angle, there's three ambiguous cases. One solution, no solution, or two solutions. The only way you're going to be able to determine that is when you take the inverse sine is checking both of those angles to see if that second angle will work or if it won't work. Jesse, you 